that's the sort of clarity we were looking for. If you have any uh, hesitation of what's going to be happening next year. Uh, I think uh, His Excellency Dr. Sultan likes to work in six-month uh, six chunks, if you will. You came and took the job as chief executive within a six-month window. You had an IPO, which uh, everybody thought that was a steep hill to climb. Uh, and less than six months uh, later, uh, you've laid out a very clear uh, downstream strategy for your partners. And even when the 40-year concessions came up, uh, as you many know, everybody thought it was going to be an ad hoc driven controlled strategy. It was ex exactly the opposite. Uh, the diversification going both west with the partners and east of the partners has been very clearly defined, and that's also going to be the case for the next wave of the downstream strategy, uh, $45 billion of investment. For those of you who watch uh, CNN from our uh, operation here in Abu Dhabi, you can often hear us say uh, we're sitting at the crossroads of east and west. Never has that become more important because of uh, the energy sector and the demand that's taking place uh, that we see today. Uh, His Excellency talked about it in terms of the demand for the future. We're in a sweet spot with global growth of nearly 4%. The OECD countries are growing, but not nearly as fast, of course, as what we see from India and from China and from Africa and Southeast Asia. Already today, of the daily demand growth of 1.6 million barrels a day, a million of that new growth is coming from Asia, and that's only going to accelerate in our time going forward. Uh, we have a fantastic panel of ministers, and I'm going to introduce them now, uh, to look at that growth demand and that tilt to the east, but very importantly in the region, strategic partners who are developing their own energy future like Egypt. And if you missed the announcement yesterday of the Strategic Petroleum Reserve being created and the first shipment going from Abu Dhabi to India, very strategic in nature, provides energy independence, energy security for India in a partnership here with the Middle East. Uh, let's welcome His Excellency Suhail bin Mohammed al Mazuri, the Minister of Energy here in the UAE. He's going to be second chair from the left there. Give a warm welcome for him, please. His Excellency Dharmendra Pradnam, Minister of Petroleum and Natural Gas for India. Good to see you again. And His Excellency Tarakal Mola, Minister of Petroleum and Mineral Resources of the Arab Republic of Egypt. Always a pleasure. We have 25 minutes for debate, all for question and answer. Uh, it's not been a quiet few weeks in the energy market. As the uh, president of OPEC, it's, uh, you have to say you called this right. We did an interview in November uh, ahead of the, uh, the gathering, the annual gathering in Vienna, and you said 2018 is going to be much better than 2017, uh, and that's certainly the case here. But I think the upside, Your Excellency, has been in the demand. It's not the politics. Yes, it's the OPEC, non-OPEC agreement. But underlying it, and often overlooked uh, with other players in the media, is that the demand growth is good. I mean, even in the first quarter, we see demand even climbing to 1.8 million barrels a day. Do, do you see this being sustained? And just as a reminder, let's bring these microphones as close as you can or lean into it because they're very directional. But it, that's, that's the, the real underlying story, isn't it, for two, 2018? I think, uh, first of all, I would like to welcome everyone uh, to... Uh, this great event, and I'd like to thank uh, His Excellency Dr. Sultan Jabir and the team for putting the uh, putting all of us together, industry uh, experts. Yes, uh, John, uh, I think uh, we've been uh, on spot on the demand forecast. Uh, the demand is healthy, and the demand is driven by the uh, by the the necessity of this commodity. And, and the, uh, the fact that uh, we had a slowdown when, when the investors did not invest enough, and now the demand is picking up when, when uh, post the OPEC and non-OPEC deal. I think two or maybe three things are uh, contributing to where we are today. One, demand is definitely much healthier than many of the expectations. And uh, we in OPEC have uh, forecasted the demand to be what you are seeing, and then maybe more. Second is the compliance of, the, uh, of OPEC and non-OPEC at the prices 
that everyone was expecting that the compliance level will not be there when the prices get to north of sixty dollars. And I think we have seen an Good. Uh, I don't want to uh, belabor this idea of the OPEC, non OPEC agreement, but there's a kind of a wider understanding that the Gulf uh, producers in particular want to see $100 oil. Uh, can you put this to rest? Because this is almost the Goldilocks, as I like to call it, editorial. If $65 to $85 a barrel it allows those sitting in the room here to say, I would like to invest. But you don't want a yo-yo where you have prices shooting up and then demand falls and then investment falls. We learned that correctly in 2008, 9, and 10. That was a painful lesson. Uh, what's the objective here by OPEC as the OPEC president, sir? The objective of OPEC and those countries even from non OPEC who are with us is to reach market stability. To have the market stabilized at an inventory level in the top countries, healthy for producers and healthy for, for, uh, for consumers as well. We don't want the market to be fluctuating, as you said, uh, $40 or $50 within a year. That is definitely not the aim. And we are not aiming at a certain price. And we say this, and, and I don't think anyone can just put a price on money as a country or even as a group and achieve it. There are so many moving parts What we need is we need to put this group of 24 countries at least and we invite others to join to work together to stabilize the market and have that, uh, that storage uh, target well maintained to ensure the consumers that there is always uh, the, the, uh, the, the oil that they would require in the inventories and to incentivize investment as well. I am, I am worried about the level of investment, not this year, two years, 2019-2020. If we don't have a forum like this where the IOCs are paying attention to the upstream and downstream, I think we will, we will see a problem down the road. And that's what, uh, what OPEC has been saying. All of the Gulf countries have been investing, actually. And I would like to commend the yeah, efforts yeah, that yeah, Adnan, yeah, Saudi Aramco, Kuwait uh, Petroleum company, company have done in having a buffer on top of, of their, 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 their production, production target. target. And that, that buffer of capacity is always helping us as a group in our big to maintain, to maintain the, uh, the market rights. Okay, very good. We'll circle back in a couple other questions. I think it's excellent. Uh, by, by design, design. So we have to give our organizers a lot of credit here. We have a, a high demand story. Uh, Egypt, Egypt was known also as a, a net importer, but that's rapidly changing. This is the revolution of technology, and as His Excellency suggested, prices. So let's start with India. Uh, the demand for crude is about, am I correct, 4.4 million barrels a day. But the headline story here is uh, that in the last three years, the demand has shot up about a fifth, about 20%. Uh, Minister, Minister, give, give this, this audience, audience a sense of that pace of growth in India. What do you see it leveling off, or is this just the nature of 7.5% growth in, in an emerging market of this size? Thank you for this uh, great forum organized by UAE, this uh, Downship Investment Forum, with the right uh, forum to jot down our uh, ambitious uh, journey of India. We all appreciate India is today number three uh, net energy consumer in the world. 
Still out of our capital energy consumption is one of the modest and one of the average in the rather some of the developing some of the developed countries in comparison. All the experts of the world, all the analysts of all the one opinion. Next 25 years, the destination of energy business will be at India. India's uh, micro and macroeconomic statistics are gradually settling down. Every year there is a growth, the CAGR growth of the hydrocarbon sector, the energy sector is quite stable, it's around 7 to 9 percent. Our appetite is increasing, a lot of uh, transportation, a lot of industrial activity, a lot of manufacturing, a lot of primarily India is a young country, we are an aspiring country. The vast uh, precondition of any development is uh, availability and accessibility of energy. So energy is the prime commodity. We appreciate energy is an investment commodity. Looking into the change in geopolitics, the change in, from Indian point of view, you never uh, uh, expect the price should be $30 plus or $40 plus. You expect there must be continuous investment in downstream, in the upstream area, in the ENP area. But looking into the aspiration of a quite a big section of the world, and India is one of the leading countries within that bracket, there must be a price stability. Yes, I appreciate my colleague, Excellency Baldur's point of view. We must have a continuous investment in the energy sector. There must be stability in price. But looking into consumers' point of view, looking into country like India, I am happy UAE is planning about uh, invest local thing global. We are currently approaching the big petrochemical complex. We are neighboring. Yesterday we have a tie up with uh, UAE or mass. Uh, Beyond buyer seller relationship, we move, we jointly with Sain, crude oil from UAE to India. By next week, it will be stored at Indian cabin. Our cabin, UAE soil, this is a win win situation for both of the country. We have carbon on few models, but with all this argument, in the emerging market, the oil producer must appreciate. We appreciate your domestic economy. We must uh, have a stabilized price, but the price must be reasonable and responsible. And country like India expect reciprocation from the producing country. Okay. You find this price today, just very quickly, before I bring in the Minister of India. It is pinching in India. It's pinching? It's pinching. It's pretty candid discussion. You can have a little debate with your man to the left. Oh. We'll, we'll see. We'll bring in Terry Cole first. It, I never would have thought we would have had this conversation if you asked me five years ago. We've heard that there's potential fields offshore uh, in Egypt. The Zor field is a giant natural gas field. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, our distinguished guest here uh, served 23 years in Shemba, so he comes in with a lot of knowledge. Uh, partnerships with any uh, chief executive is here. Partnership with BP, chief executive is here. Partnership with Rosneft as well. Give us a sense of what it means for each of them. Can you truly have energy independence by 2019, 220? We're not a net importer to drive the Egyptian economy. Yes, uh, John, thank you. Actually, I just wanted to start by uh, thanking uh, His Excellency Dr. Sultan of Jabba for organizing this uh, very important uh, forum and for inviting me. And actually, uh, I feel proud to uh, participate always in. Uh, all the forums in Abu Dhabi, like Atibek and uh, this uh, downstream investment forum as well. So thank you for that. Actually, uh, I have to say that, uh, John, five years ago, as you mentioned, and uh, perhaps everybody knows, we were passing through the uh, instability period of the two revolutions from 2011 to 2013, and then another year of instability. So this in itself has uh, caused the, uh, the automatic slow down on investments in the upstream. Uh, 2014, uh, we had this uh, big uh, crisis of uh, 
brand prices uh, collapsing, then it has automatically as well continued the expansion period of what Egypt has suffered of non-investing or slow down on investing in the upstream. And uh, as we know, for the uh, upstream business activities and for the oil and gas, you have to keep on drilling, you have to keep on keeping the investments in order to keep at least the same level of production, if not increasing it. So that's why automatically by the year 2015, we started to have a big and uh, sharp decline in our gas production, uh, which has led us to start importing LNG. And uh, of course, as of uh, that period, uh, the strategy of the government and the oil and gas sector is really to first have this fix the supply and demand and to close the gap by importation until we, we are in a position to, to uh, reinstate our production. And to do this, we had to really look uh, at our strategic partners, whom they start, uh, whom they believe in, in Egypt and their potential. And you have namely stated uh, proudly to say our strategic partners, ENI and BP. And, uh, Hence, um, let us say, uh, realizing the challenges and uh, trying to organize with them what it needs to uh, let them reinvest again. And this is what happened uh, with the complete and open uh, announcement of the reform program for Egypt. Uh, and uh, here we say that the believers that that was partners, came the discovery of Zohar with the commitment of uh, fully develop this uh, field uh, quickly. And this is what happened as we, you all know that we started the early production in December, that meant 80, uh, 28 months only from the day of discovery. Uh, what happens is that at the same time, parallel to Zohar, we were uh, having other developments uh, accelerated in order to quickly breach the gap between supply and demand, and we were able to develop several uh, gas fields as, as fast. And now uh, we can say that uh, with Doh and with other projects that we have uh, developed in the recent uh, time, and actually in 2017, was one of the biggest achievements that we have made in, in gas production in Egypt. We have added 25% of our gas production, which meant that we are now talking about uh, the self-sufficiency uh, by the end of this year, not next year. Uh, the stability that, that we've seen in the government lately has opened the door to investment. In 30 seconds only, because we're tied on time here, can you export in the next five years to Europe, can you be a strategic provider of natural gas, the Eastern Mediterranean basin, into Europe, uh, Minister Mola, or not? Yes, this is what we are doing currently, and with uh, our uh, uh, Europe as a strategic uh, and potential uh, consumer uh, and buyer for the, not only Egypt gas, but actually the Eastern Mediterranean gas, and we consider ourselves as, a, as an important player in the Eastern Mediterranean gas, and actually we can see that with our neighboring countries, all of them, we are complementing each other. So if there is gas there, as it is the fact, we are trying to let them monetize their gas by bringing it through pipelines to Egypt, from Egypt through our LNG plants to be exported to uh, Europe. And, and this is what we had in our uh, uh, strategic MOU signed with uh, last month, and as well what we are doing currently with Cyprus and with upstreamers uh, of uh, Israel with our private sector. It's an incredible uh, effort here. I'd love to have you in the studio when I say 30 seconds because uh, it's closer to a little bit towards the minute. It's a complex subject. Uh, Mr. Brother, 30 seconds again, if I can here. The Strategic Petroleum Reserve, a refinery, that's going to be jointly worked together here with us. Aramco and Adnan is, is the plan going forward. 
this is clearly a silk road that they need to have your closest partners involved in your energy future. How important is that, would you suggest, the refining capacity that you've been lacking? On today, our refining capacity is around uh, 245 million metric ton. By next uh, 20 years, our requirement will be around 500 million metric ton. We have to catch up with our uh, need. We have to prepare ourselves. East West Coast refinery, the Pranga refinery, is a very ambitious project for India. Today, uh, in a way, I am talking with my uh, Dear colleague, Dear Excellency Java, with the face of Java, with his ambitious new refinery capacity. We want to, we want to have a state of art uh, technology driven refinery, complex refinery with a petrochemical uh, facility. It's, it will be a world class project. We need a technology partner, we need best practice, we need a strong uh, supply, long term supply assurance. We are a very uh, good at agreement and arrangement with Aramco. We are expecting ADNOP will be part of the ambitious plan. Our understanding, both of them will come to India as our partner. I'm happy. Formalities are on. It will be take full shape in the near future. This will be an ambitious and new model. This is a clear cut integration between producer and consuming market uh, and complementing each other's economics and need. This is an ambitious project for India and this sub subcontinent also. Okay, very good. Uh, finally, uh, Mr. Mazrui, I don't want to overplay it, but in the context of the evolution of this industry over six de decades, that, this is a big deal. I mean, it's not just a dollar amount, $45 billion of the strategic nature. India and Egypt, but this downstream move is a game changer, is it not, for the country? Just explain in 30 seconds why it is so important from your vantage point and not from the, the corporate hat of, of an ad hoc and his excellency, Dr. Sultan. I would say this is transformative, not only transition. Uh, I think what, uh, what the team have done, I'm mean, proud of all of them. It's a part of team. In a very short time, they have realized there is an opportunity. Timing is well studied as well. And it's an opportunity for Abu Dhabi to open to the consumers. And I think the investment appetite on, from the consumers today and the technology they provide as well, hand in hand with our European partners, can do, do those uh, projects in the time that it would require. And I think this platform will, will show uh, hopefully that we can do this together, we can add value to the investors and at the same time add stability to the market. Okay, okay, terrific. Thanks, Thanks for being, being so brief and direct. direct. Uh, we're a little bit tight on time because we have a lot on the agenda this morning. Uh, Minister Almola, Minister Pradna, and of course His Excellency Suhail al -Mazri. Nice round of applause. Thank you very much for being so sustained. Nicely done. So, uh, because of the detail, if you think about the evolution of this uh, event this morning, uh, Dr. Sultan laid out a very clear big picture strategy of where Adnox is going to be going with this downstream.